Hello, my name is Timothy Kinniger. I am the manager of the RapidView software department. Today we're just going to do a introductory training video for ICUS Evolution, just walk you through the basic steps of how to do an inspection, how to um, transfer that data out uh, for customers or clients. We're going to hit on a couple other small pieces in here as well, uh, but this is not a totality. We will be covering more advanced topics like uh, specific modules such as shapefile import export 3d geosense laser profile analysis in future videos uh, but this video is really to just get you started and get you doing inspections uh, right away uh, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in here so the method i like to show everybody is what i like to call moving down the river as we go through each of our steps there's going to be more tabs up here and you're going to be able to just move down this top bar up here at your leisure and that'll be able to take you through a complete inspection um, from creating a customer all the way down so starting here at the beginning where all good things start right here at this start button right here we're gonna go ahead and open this up just a couple of things I want to highlight to you real quick so we have this service option down here if you hover over that you'll notice we have an eboc remote support option if you go ahead and open that up it's going to go ahead and open up a team viewer window with the user ID and password. And if you call into the RapidView software department, as long as you have that information, we can remote into the computer here and take a look and see what's going on and help get you back on your way. Uh, the next thing that I need to show you is the basics. So add customers. So this is going to be our first step to start our inspection. So we're going to go ahead and press this suit wearing gentleman with the plus mark right there. So we're going to go ahead and add a customer. I'm going to go ahead and name this video training today video training all right now you'll notice that it comes up asking for information contact information for the customer as well as um, uh, street address information this information is not required so go ahead and continue on but if you want to fill out that information you are more than welcome to so we're going to go ahead and go up to the video training tab up here again you'll notice we have a little gentleman in a suit to represent that and we're going to select add project which is this manila folder right here with the green plus mark so we're going to go ahead and select that it's going to come up and ask us to name our project we're going to go ahead and name this same thing as our customer we're just going to name it training video now you'll notice down here that pacp is automatically selected that is the coding system for nasco um, which is the standard there is another option for simple project on here the only real difference between the two is coding uh, as well as PACP has a couple extra requirements to so go ahead and start the inspection but we're gonna go ahead and go through that today uh, the big thing is just make sure that you have the correct interface right here this right here you want to make sure you have the proper one selected if you're wanting to do a PACP inspection that needs to be selected if you select a simple project not all of the same defect codes are going to show up so just make sure you're selecting the right thing there so we're gonna go ahead and select OK and it's gonna go ahead and take us to our next tab so up here at the top we have our training video project tab represented by this manila folder right off the top here there's a lot of options in here we're not going to cover most of these today what I want to actually focus on right now are these three options add section add lateral and add manhole these are our three sewer object types uh, to show you the basics today we're going to go ahead and add a section but you can add either lateral or manhole at any time if you feel it's necessary so we're going to go ahead and do our mainline section right here. You'll notice it asks for the upstream and downstream manhole here. Those are not required to continue on with your inspection. Uh, if you are wanting to be PACP compliant, those are required. Uh, but you can go ahead and skip that to add your object. I am going to go ahead and fill those out today. So I'm going to name my upstream manhole manhole one. And I'm going to name my downstream manhole number two. Now pipe segment reference. This is just the name of the section you are inspecting currently we're gonna go ahead and name that 1-2 whatever naming uh, convention you want to use that is entirely up to you um, but this is what I like to do just for a quick introduction here so we're gonna go ahead and press OK and that's gonna go ahead and create our object for us it takes us right to our object information page now there is a lot of information that you can see on here a lot of blank fields another nice thing about this is is none of this information has to be filled out unless you want to do a PACP or NASCO certified inspection. If that is what you're wanting to do, you'll have to make sure that you fill out all of the fields with this yellow caution sign right here. That means, hey, look at me, I need filled out. 
for today's purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and skip this. Um, and we're gonna go up here to our section. You'll notice it has the name on there and it's represented by our little orange pipe section right there. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And you have a couple of options, add lateral, add inspection. Again, we're not gonna worry about most of these. What we wanna worry about is this piece of paper with the plus mark right here, add inspection. That's our next step. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that. It's gonna ask us which direction we wanna go for our inspection, upstream, downstream. For today's purposes, we're gonna go ahead and say upstream. It's gonna take a second to load, and now we are at our inspection sheet. So again, you'll notice there are required fields on here for PACP inspections with this yellow caution sign. This is the only page that has required data that needs to be filled out. Anything with these yellow caution marks on here in order to continue on and start our actual video recording needs to be filled out. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out Timothy, my certificate number. Uh, we're just gonna say it's one, two, three. And then we're gonna select pre-cleaning, whatever the correct one is, and inspection status. If you're doing a video recording, you are doing a complete inspection, so we'll go ahead and select that on there. And we are ready to continue on to our next step. So we're gonna go ahead up here to new inspection up here at the top. It's this piece of paper with a little explosion on it. And we're gonna go ahead and select start inspection, which is just represented by the gentleman in the uh, overall and uh, hard hat right here. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. You might also notice that down here, we also have this option. One of the nice things about our software is, is that there's a lot of different ways to do things. You can find your own way that you feel most comfortable to do this. This is just what I find to be the easiest way to show people. So we're gonna go ahead and go to start inspection on here. It's gonna ask us if we wanna set our length counter to zero feet. We are gonna say yes. The reason we're gonna say yes is because when you do a PACP inspection, there are two codes that need to be put in right at the top, but we'll go ahead and go over those here in just a minute. Now, you'll notice we already have our uh, nice inspection overlay here. These fields here, street, city, pipe use material, I did not fill those out earlier, but if I did, they would be represented on here. You'll notice that my pipe segment reference is on here, the name of my pipe, as well as the top and bottom manhole. Down here, and up here, this is set by a data display generator. We have a nice little viewing direction indicator which shows you where you're looking at and where you're at in the pipe. We also have our distance represented by LC1, the time, and today's date. To go ahead and start our inspection, we finally have to break from our down the river method here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select this nice red button right here, this red circle. That is our record button. So we're gonna go ahead and press that to start our recording. You'll notice that that goes ahead and turns into a blue square. That's what we're gonna use to stop our recording later on. All right, now, w there are three different ways to add a observation on here, okay? And we're gonna go through each one. The first one that we're gonna do is the basic method. If you select this option right here, the piece of paper with the plus mark, it's gonna go ahead and bring up our coding list here. So you'll notice that these are broken up and color coded. This is matching NASCO's color coding chart. Uh, and you can go through each one of these to go ahead and find whatever code you're looking for if you know where you're supposed to be looking at. I know the name of my code. So I can go up here to this search bar up here and click on it and type in AMH on here. And it's gonna go ahead and bring that up for me. You can also use that to search for code. So if I didn't know the whole code, I could go ahead and type in AM here and it'll bring up anything with AM, which in this situation is access point meter and access point manhole, but we want access point manhole. The first two codes that need to be in every PACP inspection are AMH and MWL. If those are not entered in before you put in other codes in our software, it will not let you enter in other codes because those have to be in before any other codes. It's gonna go ahead and ask for a remark here. You'll notice that there's a little red circle right here. This will show up on some codes. That means a remark is required to go ahead and move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put start manhole on here as my remark. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this green circle down here. You can also press enter. Either way, it's gonna go ahead and save that remark for us. And you'll notice that that red icon's gone from the corner there. That means that this is good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and add our observation we're gonna select this green circle down here, or like I said earlier, 
you can go ahead and press enter and that'll go ahead and add that for us. And you'll notice over here on our nice little graphic that Evolution does, it's added on there. That means we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and add in our second code. Now, the second way to add in a code is to just start typing. You don't have to press any buttons to operate it. So we're going to go ahead and use MWL. And as you can see, it just goes ahead and brings that right up for me. And I'm going to go ahead and select miscellaneous water level here. It's going to come up and ask me for a water level percent. Some codes have specific requirements and you'll see our software is very good about letting you know what is required to enter in this code. We're gonna go ahead and say 0% because we're just here in the lovely rapid view garage and we're gonna go ahead and select that. Now you'll notice that there's no red circle here. That means a remark's not required for this code. So we're gonna go ahead and just accept that code for us. Now, with those two codes out of the way, we are good to start our inspection. However, when you do an inspection, a lot of times you're not starting at zero feet. You're already a few feet in the pipe, but you have to have those codes at zero feet. So what you do is, as I showed you earlier, you set your distance counted to zero feet. And if you just go down here to this little tractor icon, as you can see, it says zero feet down here, you can go ahead and you can change this to whatever I wanted. So if I wanted to change this to 500 feet, I could, and you can see that changes right there. You can also just go ahead and select five feet, which is what I'm going to do today and say we're already five feet into our pipe. And as you can see, that updates right there, right for you automatically. So now we're going to go ahead and drive forward a little bit. We're just going to move forward, not too far, just because we're obviously not doing an actual inspection. All right, we're going to say 10 feet. Sounds good to me. So the third and final way to add an observation to your inspection is we have this lovely hotkey bar up here. Now, as you can notice, a lot of these are blank. These can be filled out by you. Um, these can be, a lot of times I see AMH added on here, MWL, codes that you're gonna use pretty regularly. These can be overridden at any time, so it is very modular. You can always change it to suit your needs. Uh, for today's demonstration, I just went ahead and put MSA up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this hotkey already has information that I filled out earlier. So I've already got a remark in here. If I didn't, MSA is one of those codes that requires a remark. But because I had it saved as a hotkey, that information was already saved in there. So we're good to go ahead and add this. We're just gonna go ahead and hit this green circle right here. And we're gonna select Save Observation. Awesome, so we've got our first two codes and now we have MSA, which means Miscellaneous Survey Abandoned. We have now finished our inspection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close out of this. First thing you need to do is stop your recording, which is this beautiful blue button right here. We're gonna go ahead and select that. Do you really wanna stop your recording? Absolutely, we're gonna hit okay. Now that that's done, all we have to do is exit out. We just hit the X button up here at the top of our inspection window, and it's gonna go ahead and close our inspection. It will first ask if you would like to set your total length for your inspection. A lot of times you're good to say, yes, I'm gonna go ahead and set my total pipe length to 10 feet. However, for whatever reason, you had to abandon a inspection early because there was debris in the pipe or roots or uh, you got submerged underwater, whatever reason it is. You can also select this do not set total length down here and you can go in and fill in the total length of your pipe manually if you have that information. So we're gonna go ahead and hit set total length to 10 feet today though. All right, now that's all filled out. We can go right here to this observations tab and double check. Make sure our observations are on there. Great, everything's already on there for us. So we are good to go ahead and export out our data. So we have two different ways to export out data. You can either go to the project or to the object. So again, we can either go to this project, this manila folder right here, or we can go over to this orange pipe section if we wanna just export out the data for this. We're gonna go ahead and do it for the entire project today though, because we don't have much on here. So we're gonna go ahead and select training video. Now we're gonna move down to the data transfer. You've got a nice guy in a suit with an arrow there. That means we're sending it to the office. So we're gonna go ahead and do a data transfer. First field you'll see is path up here at the top. If you hit these three dots, it'll bring up a file explorer and you can go ahead and select wherever on your computer you wanna send that information, whether that's a removable hard drive, a USB, or like today, we're just gonna go ahead and drop it on our desktop today. We're gonna go ahead and just hit OK. As you'll notice, that file path has been filled out for us. We're gonna move down to select the data. You can hit these check boxes down here to go ahead and export out anything that you want. We're gonna get more into some of these options later on, 
but today we're just going to hit films, pictures, and reports. Uh, one thing to note is these wrench icons right here will let you change certain settings for your exports. Again, we're going to get into most of these later. Um, but to just show you reports here, if we hit this wrench icon, you'll notice that you can select what data you want on your report. You can also add your custom cover page on there, a project page, table of contents, all that fun stuff down on there. Where Everything looks good to me here, so we're just going to go ahead and do our export here. We're going to go ahead and press start, and it's going to take just a second to load. And then that export's going to go right through. Now, when this export finishes, it's going to ask us if we want to go ahead and open up our uh, file directory. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And that opens up. And this is what your export looks like. Right on my desktop, you'll notice it has the name of the project up there. And it has your films, your photos, and your reports. You just want to double click, make sure that everything's in there, make sure you're all good to go. So here are photos that were taken with my observations. And here's my film down here at the bottom, labeled by the section. All right, well, that is a quick version, just a little introduction training for, of the basic workflow for ICUS Evolution. Like I stated earlier, we will be doing more advanced topics, hitting on some of these extra settings in here, hitting on these modules, um, just more advanced user stuff to help you in the future. Uh, but for today, that pretty much sums up everything that we're going to show you. Uh, if you guys have any questions at any point, please feel free to go ahead and reach out to us at any, at any time. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.